just wanted to do a little review of solute potential and osmolarity, and also make a correction uh, to something from lecture today. All right, so I've got my little table set up here, and I've got two cells up at the top. You can see that this one has a low concentration of solute, and this one over here has a high concentration of solute. So I've already labeled those. Now what we're going to think about is what that means as far as the, the solute potential and also the osmolarity of these two cells. Well, osmolarity, this is the one that's easiest to figure out because there's a direct relationship between the solute and the osmolarity. So low solute concentration means low osmolarity. High solute concentration means high osmolarity. All right. The solute potential, this one here, is a little bit trickier, right? This one has an inverse relationship. So if we have low solute concentration, we have high solute potential. And if we have a high solute concentration, we have low solute potential. So that one's a little bit important tricky. thing to remember here is that water is always going to move the same way, right? We're always going to get move water moving from an area of low solute concentration to an area of high concentration. So whether you're talking about solute potential or osmolarity, it's always going to move in this way. Now, you might be thinking to yourself at this point, okay, why have these two different terms? You know, what's the, what's the value of that? Honestly, part of it has to do with the history of plant biology and animal biology, where plant biologists have tended to use water potential and solute potential to describe these things, and animal biologists have tended to use osmolarity. But there's a more important reason why we want to use solute potential when talking about plants, and that is because when we're thinking about water potential, when we're thinking about the potential of water to move from one place to another in plants, it's influenced by solute, but also it's influenced by pressure, right? We have both of these affecting that. And if we just focused on osmolarity in plants, we would miss that whole uh, component of pressure. All right, hello everyone. This is Professor Fraser or Tony from your Biology 162 lecture from about 15 or 20 minutes ago. And so I just wanted to help alleviate any confusion from the way that I explain the situation with our high and low water potential with our clicker question today. So I just wanted to point out the fact that I did actually make a mistake and explain this a little bit incorrectly, so hopefully this will help alleviate any confusion. And so with this clicker question, it's, uh, it reads, an animal cell with high osmolarity has which of the following in common with dry soil? And our answers are A, with high water potential, B, low water potential, C, high pressure potential, and D, low pressure potential. And so right away, I want you guys to be aware that this is really not to do with pressure at all. So you can just completely take those out of the equation. And so now we need to decide if it's A, with a high water potential or low water potential. And in fact, the proper choice here is B, which was a mistake on my part, so I said it was A in lecture today. And so the way to think about this is, is that the water is going to move from an area of low solute concentration to an area of high solute concentration. And so the water potential in an area of low solute concentration does have high water potential. So there's high water potential in areas of low solute concentration. And the way that I was trying to explain this is that that water in the situation with low solute concentration has a high potential to move as a high potential to move to an area of higher solute concentration. And so indeed, the right answer is